talking. The lecturette is also a test of confidence. It's to see whether a man has the ability to get up and make his particular point of view in front of numerous others. Okay, the story is that uh, we're a patrol and we've uh, just come across a, a footbridge which has been blown down by uh, demolitions or shells and we are carrying a special piece of equipment with us. Now our problem is we've got to get the special... I enjoyed my life because I thought it was quite good fun. It was fairly challenging, pretty good, really good fun. We were sort of crawling around the ditch doing silly things and being chased by guards and this sort of thing. The tests, once again, a challenge to see how well you could do on it and you could assess yourself against the other blokes. And then we'll put the log across from this ramp to the other ramp. And um, we'll, we'll attach this, this special piece of equipment to the log, and then we'll move the log along until it's onto the other side. OK. assessing everyone else on the bus, looking at other people and trying to work out what type of people they were and what sort of competition I'd have on the course, comparing myself with everyone else. Yeah, I'd always been sure of myself up until then, but all of a sudden on the first day with them, and shouting at you and screaming at you, running around, and you are like a fish out of water. And I think the only thing he can pull you through is trying to meet most of the other chaps and find out how they feel. And you, you find out that you're not the only one that's feeling like that. Everyone else, there's 28 of us, there's everyone else is feeling the same way. And I think even there from the first day we started to confide in each other and gain strength from knowing that everyone else felt the same way. You realise that all that the instructors are doing is to help you. They're not, not really to, to push you under and ride you, to, to help you and to develop you. The first phase is the initial or basic training phase, which incorporates turning civilians into soldiers. They gave a spiel right at the beginning of the drill. And the idea I remember from that was that drill is supposed to instill in a recruit an idea that he's working as part of a team, exactly the same as the other blokes. Secondly, when he's given an order, he responds to it immediately as a reaction. He doesn't think about it. Just the basic elements of discipline in a bloke are put in there. It's really important. Drill nobody loves, but it really is important. I think initially to be physically fit on the course is an advantage because the first 10 weeks is very much concentrated on uh, the physical aspect and if one is not fit then you're going to be exhausted in the, uh, by the time the evening comes when you're supposed to sit down and start doing a little bit of extra work and um, getting your, your kit uh, ship shape and this sort of thing and um, you're going to suffer as a consequence. I think subsequently, in battle conditions, when a man leaves the School of Infantry as an officer, it is essential to be fit in that you are leading troops. And this implies, of course, that you've got to set the standard, you've got to set the example, and you set the pace. You take, for example, a man in the field who has been tracking down a group of terrorists all day. The leader has to be able to map read, he has to be able to send back a situation reports make assessments of any situation. He's got to be able to make appreciations of the ground, of any position. And once they get into battle, he's got to lead those men into battle. If he's unfit, then he can't even start to concentrate on these other aspects because he's got this great problem of exhaustion. Down, 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 down. Okay. 
The first phase of the course, you know, there's a handle lot of bull and spit and polish and the sort of rubbish, associated rubbish that goes with it. You understand why you're having to do this sort of thing, and even though it's a bit of a pain at the time, one does it. Not up to standard. Actual fact, you are below standard. Be shy of standing in time to raise the game. Come up. Right, the bed there. There's been some effort. However, as far as the small points go, not enough time and effort. Remember that. I think I hated the shine parade most. It might take hours to fix up your kit for some little sergeant to come in and tip your bed over and throw the whole lot on the floor. You've got to start all over again, and that's the biggest pain. Brosses as well. I'm not up to standard. Car. 72795. I was going to have Prince Lucas. Fluff on your cap. Fluff on your cap. Prince Lucas. I'll ask you to get a brush on it and brush it all down. Side burns as well. I'm getting too, too long there, lad. Make sure they cut off at the top of your ear. Shut up. Once again. It's not something you don't enjoy. It's good fun. You can laugh about it afterwards. It's really hell of a good one. Got the guys together. But at the time, you know, it's probably the least enjoyable part of the course. Ah, twisted lace in your boots. Don't want to see that again. Well done on this bed layout. Have the remainder. Much to be desired. Lots of fluff. Stand time for The fifth phase is designed to turn a man who from various different standings in society, turn that man into a soldier. The phase itself incorporates various aspects of basic training. These include weapon training, during which he's taught to use effectively and become proficient in those weapons which he'll be dealing with in later life, not only himself, but those troops under his command. We issued our FNs on day one and they stay with us for the remainder of the course. The idea of this is to let the weapon become a part of the soldier's body. You, know, you treat it like part of your own body, you clean it every day, you maintain it and in turn you become very used to it. A lot of people came here with the idea that the School of Infantry was a glorified university where you walked around and uh, with a briefcase and white tabs on your shoulders and due course you got your pips and you uh, passed out as an officer. But it's totally different to that. It's quite a traumatic experience. On fire! Uh, it involved what um, any recruit course involved, which is the basics. And even before that, it is a matter of breaking down all the individuals into something the School of Infantry could work with and something we could work into a team. Because you get a lot of individuals coming from all walks of life and each person has his own ideas and each person uh, would like to do his own thing, in other words. And their objective at this stage is to break us all down into one uh, uniform body and then from there to build us up again and to build us into a unit, into a working team. This involved a lot of uh, physical exercise, physical uh, bashing about more than anything else, running around all over the place, shouting, screaming, all this sort of thing. And it's quite a traumatic experience for somebody who's not really used to it. There's a tremendous amount of responsibility, really, when you consider it. In a year, they take somebody from a school, um, work on that person, and in a, in a matter of a year, 13 months, they produce a man who is now capable of leading a platoon of men. It's quite a tremendous That's step in, in someone's life, in a young man's life. Come on, man! 